I am Libre Humans and welcome to Decision Making Embodied. This is a podcast by Next Level Embodiment, the self-empowerment and self-mastery framework for high-level decision makers who want to tap into their unlimited power to thrive, win, and impact in spite of all external social and cultural circumstances. Next Level Embodiment is all about embodying decisions that lead you towards your next level by practicing deep presence, cultivating unlimited vitality levels, and establishing unshakable integrity. Hosted by Art and myself, our guests are thought leaders and influencers who share their experiences and stories of handling tough choices and high-pressure decision-making moments, navigating through real life's challenges. In this episode, and today, as a way shower to your next level and embodiment, we have Slavomira Hrsegova. Slavomira is a feng shui practitioner and harmony designer. She is helping people to create harmony and positive energy flow in their homes so that they can get energetic support by reaching their goals and making their dreams come true. She's guiding people on their transformational journey to being powerful creators so that they can indeed achieve the greatest desires and have the energy to do it. She's using Feng Shui to teach people how to become healthy and vital, live with more ease and lightness, enjoy the everyday life more, create more abundance, and live their fullest potential in alignment with their soul. Yeah, okay. Hi. Hi there, dear. How are you today? Oh, I'm great, as always. <laughs> okay, uh, not always, but mostly. Um, well, I'm okay. I'm enjoying always like talking to people and, and just talking about energy. So mm -hmm. I'm excited. So um, I gave that short introduction about you, though I'd love to know based on who you introduced yourself as, who do you feel you are today? How are you going about it today? Oh, I'm I'm a joyful creator. This is to what I what I became in in the last few years, and um, I'm really enjoying that. Mm -hmm. A joyful creator. So you're choosing to be, you're deciding to be that joyful creator. Yeah, and I also I'm creating my life. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, fantastic. So we fully know and will get to understand deeper and deeper how decision making is an activity that we cannot skip and by you joining us into this conversation for our for our audience um i totally know that your work is so important to the matter of decision making to the matter of making choices to the matter of using the energy that we've got for making the right decisions and choices and using those, those those good decisions and choices to improve our energy. It is a virtuous cycle, how I like to call it. So um, vitality, I'd like to ask you this question. Vitality is being explored more and more, uh, in, in especially in this 21st century, let me call it this way, as almost a new science. And they usually say to that is very important to add years to your life. What I like to go about is adding life to your ears, right? And so exactly. why do you think that vitality is so important when decision making is in place, when you have to make decisions, when you have to make choices for your life, for your business, for your relationship? Why is it so important? Yeah, um, I will always, because this is a really science-based theme about how your brain works when you are going to make a decision, what just happened, but mm -hmm. I'm always uh, give you the information for, from my point of view, from the point of view, like energy. And mm -hmm. it's, you know, if, if you feel good, so you are in just higher vibes and you have 
you are open to different kind of options and opportunities, you know, by energy making. Because if you are in fear, if you are stressed and you have, there are decisions available for you only on the energy level you are in or mm -hmm. just vibration level. If you are in fear, you will always get some catastrophic scenarios about things you are trying to choose, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but if you feel good, if you are self-confident, if you are happy, so you will see the world with completely different eyes and right. you are open to completely different possibilities. So mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. is why is your energy level important while making good, an important decision. Mm -hmm. Could this we just one point of this one point? More. Yeah. Well, let's 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 start from that. I mean, from what I heard uh, and what you kind of spark into my mind as a reflection is from a very scientific standpoint because next level embodiment really wants to bring the scientific and the spiritual together and and we do it through our framework right um here the point is that vitality and and high energy levels are a part of the framework that we bring on in next level embodiment and when you speak specifically to this piece to this element um well you need to consider that energy can be electric energy kind of very uh, scientifically understood and it can be more prana chi uh, or all those more intangible yet very spiritually scientific as i like to say pieces so now what i what i'd like to understand is are we talking about tuning into places options possibilities that are at a at a higher level of energy or, and frequency because energy being frequency and and vibrations and and all that kind of uh, a bit more intangible and spiritual talk no, we don't need to go into something intangible. I mean, just this basic level, like how you feel. You feel if you wake up in the morning, if you are energized or if you are like, you know, I just don't have energy to do anything. This kind of energy, like you feel, you feel it in your body. If you are just energized or if you are like, oh, okay, I don't have energy. So nothing like feel um can you repeat just this last part because i don't know if it was your connection or mine but i didn't hear it so as as we so just this last piece yeah it's all about how do you feel you feel if you are energized right. or if you are in low energy it's nothing like highly spiritual no vibrations or frequencies or anything uh, mm -hmm. like we don't need to use this this kind of language mm -hmm. we can stay in our body and just feel how we feel in our body do you feel good in your body Right. Or just mm -hmm. there, you feel there's something off. Right. I hear you on that. So it would be then the vitality yeah. levels, literally yeah. vitality yeah. versus we can stay just there. energy. Energy stays more in the realm of, yeah, indeed, the entire. We don't world. have, you know, we don't have like a language for this, like to specify what kind of energy it could be yeah really it could be like electricity or any other energy but what i'm talking mostly about it's vitality in sense of how do you feel do you feel energized mm -hmm. or or not mm. and if i asked you if i brought to you the actual this is a metaphor that i use a lot right and uh, what i tell my clients my my, my crowd is that we are energy factories. We are power factories, electric power factories. 
Now let's go about this piece because we have 50 trillion cells and every single cell every second produces 0.2 volts of energy, electrical energy. It, it gives this bzz, bzz. And so if we align them, that's when you produce like thunderbolts and, and lightnings of energy in your body. And that's more of what you actually consume. If you eat a sandwich, you don't consume a lightning of energy to, to actually digest it. But you can produce that lightning of energy per second. It's like a nuclear yeah. power that you've yeah. got at your disposal, right? Would that be the harmony that you speak to when you bring in your Feng Shui practices and your harmony creation uh, in the home of people? But I know that you work, yes, for the home. Uh, and it's not just the traditional Feng Shui that you do. It's, it's, it's really about the person more than the environment. Yeah, yeah. And this is so true what you're talking about. We can like produce energy and it's all about our mindset because our thoughts is what, like, you know, what uh, our mindset is. If you believe that you can, if you are happy, so you will be able to produce so much more energy. You feel inspiration. You are, you know, just ready to do anything. And this is this inner energy. And, and, and you can, in the next moment, in someone will tell you, oh, this is not possible. And you will believe that all this energy just is gone. And this is just... You know, it's not like real energy. You can store that or something. It's all about your your mm -hmm. mindset. Mm -hmm. But you. we can help, like, set us to this kind of mindset by setting up our space to mm -hmm. remind us or just to form us to let us grow into that energy. Mm. So this is like connection and it's also of course like traditional feng shui is about like creating harmony and energy flow in space but from my perspective it always depends also uh, on the person who lives there what are your goals and it could be different like the right energy for you can be different for someone else who is just not just but who is now is focused on growing children and if someone else is in a different phase of his life and is just focusing mm. on growing his business and just has different needs and need to tap into a different kind of energy but mm. uh, at the same time in our bedroom we all just need to you know recharge our batteries so it's more but here also can be a difference if you are just you know freshly get married and you need more passion and and express mm -hmm. love or if you just live alone and if you are just in middle age or you know and you have also different needs so it's, of course there's a context yeah yeah mm -hmm. it's about mm -hmm. context mm -hmm. it's your space is about you and you need to set up your space right that will support you your mm -hmm. specific your specific you. goals mm -hmm. i truly truly love it and and look um this is where i feel uh things tune up into so in the next level embodiment um there are these three first pieces self-awareness and presence high vitality and rejuvenation and uh, integrity and authenticity and then there are these other two pieces that are moving and continuously in use right and there's the inner work and embodiment so feel the feeling and and trauma work and nlp so like the different layers different levels the heart the mind the 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 the, the chakras and and feeling the feelings like in the body the electricity and so I always do this this kind of back and forth with inner work and there's the outer work and outer work is to translate what you have inside outward and to make sure that they align so otherwise there's yeah. incongruence right there's not 
and a harmonious interaction in between the internal world and the out the, and the external world. Yeah. So this is my well, favorite topic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This you, is kind you of... told that. Yeah. Okay. Just. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I will let yeah. you ask question, but uh, yeah, I have oh, so many ideas yeah, because see, you saw exactly what I'm talking about because uh -huh. we are expressing our inner world, we are expressing in outer world. And this uh -huh. is also important that if you are just mm, designing your home in uh, some phase of your life, but we are constantly growing. And if you just let the environment the same, but you internally, you would like to grow, you feel that you can mm -hmm. just reach your full potential, be someone, you know, more powerful or more intuitive or anything, just you can, you want to grow. And then your environment, it could feel like if you, you know, if child is wearing some clothes, but then child grows and, and it stays in the same clothes it, it can yeah you, you just can't you need to change that so the same uh, yeah. way you need to change the environment and mm -hmm. if you feel who you want to become who you are becoming you can set up your environment the way that it will support you into this growing into uh -huh. it you know it mm -hmm. will grow more naturally so yeah i'm so excited right. about this topic mm -hmm. so i'm sorry <laughs> Oh, no, don't be sorry. Thank you for bringing it up for our for our audience for who is listening. And I do have a question. And this goes, of course, as every question for you, Slavomira, and for uh, whomever is listening right now, all decision makers. There are three broadly accepted um, decision making types types of decision makers right and the first one is rational the second is intuitive and the third one is emotional so um, limitedly to three to these three boxes because i do believe there are more but i would like to um i'd like to understand what do you feel you i know that you you have this holistic worldview and i'd like you to, to, to pick one, actually, to choose one, to be the decision maker. Right now, I have to pick one. What type of decision maker are you? And I'm asking everyone, myself as well, a rational, an intuitive, or an emotional decision maker. Yeah. So before, as um, I'm thinking about how I was growing up and everything, I was so rational, but it was so overwhelming for me to take a decision because there's so many things you just can't predict. You know, it was always like difficult for me to take a decision, like make some, mm. take some direction in my life or something. Sure. And now I'm intuitive. And but this like emotional, I'm not sure um. because I feel and now I I believe that my decision making is intuitive because I decided to do that. So and and sometimes I can like call, catch myself in uh, like turning back, back to my head again. But now as I'm more aware of my body, I can feel, oh, I can feel a pressure in my head. Ah, so there you go. out of your head and just back to the heart and take decision from the heart. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Okay. So, so I noticed how they can actually change in based on what you're saying they you changed approach to decision making along the years and along your along with your evolution yeah. is that what you saying led to that i'm not sure if i if the change is the right word for the word for that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because before i was uh, i was always like this rational kind of person right. i mm -hmm. wanted to figure mm -hmm. out everything understand everything in my head Right. And 
but I was always fascinating with people who were able to understand energy. And I wasn't just, I wasn't mm, that just kind of person. Me. I didn't feel anything. I just tried to figure it out in my head. Either. And now I feel like it's not that I changed. It's that I just, now I opened to mm. feeling that because we all have this access to our intuition. I just mm -hmm. learned how to, yes, how to open more to feeling, to connect with my intuition. And this is when, if it was possible for me, I was the most rational and uh, person in, in the world and I didn't feel anything, you know, anything. Right. Actually, like, uh, no, I don't okay. feel okay. You feel this, this energy here now. <laughs> And I just trained myself and I just Ooh. now am more open to it. I can Look at this. feel it. Mm. I this can connect with energy. And when you are talking about these three types of like um, decision makers, right? Mm -hmm. I believe that we need all three kinds of you know you need mm -hmm. also you you maybe your feelings is mm -hmm. not enough because it could be like fear-based and you feel fears mm -hmm. you are just not going to to do that but intuition is more like on emotions mm -hmm. ah, beautiful can only, yeah but in the same time, if you feel that, okay, this is what is right for me, you also need to check that with your mind and check mm -hmm. some prepare for that or, or something to be aware of what you can expect if you just take this direction or something. So we just need all three types. Yeah, the mastery, yeah. the mastery of the different we need to be able yeah. to switch from one to another. It's like developing your mind, developing your heart, developing your gut. Because if we actually yeah. go and separate, yeah. it's the three main brains yeah, now. Like from one brain to three, then from three to five, and now they're kind of saying yeah, the whole you body need is to a use brain. Just, you need to use all three of them by mm -hmm. make, mm -hmm. taking, making decision. Look, I want to step a little back um in the conversation from from these that you just shared this by the way is i strongly advocate a very important message that you can shift that you can change the type of decision maker you are and that you can also choose what type of decision yeah. maker to be in the yeah. specific situation for that you do need energy you do need the energy to sustain and to well if you want overcome the force that pulls you back from your reptilian brain for example you have this fear and, and you're so afraid you can do it you need a high level of energy to, to pour into changing and pivoting so yeah it's kind of bringing it back into context right and now when i said i was stepping back after you delivered this marvelous message was that you said you used to make decision in a very um allow me the term closed box uh, or one type of decision making i'm very rational and i don't feel energy and um i might have some feeling around it but i won't listen I'm, i will go that way anyways so now that we've learned about some of the science of decision making right um let's talk about some decision making pitfalls that you that you uh, had and i feel that pitfalls might be found right in those times where you just went for the rational and and, and it may be ignoring your intuition ignoring your inner knowing ignoring these three pieces right so yeah this is a great can you share thing. it with me can you yeah share it with of us course but but uh, i would like to turn back then to you were talking about this change and how this reptilian brain is trying to prevent us and how much energy it requires to change something and there's so many things how you can support yourself in changing something in your environment so let's turn back to that later and now i can talk about this uh, decision making just from my mind 
Mm-hmm. And back then, I I thought that this is just only way how you can make decision. And right. but now, as I'm looking back, and what was going on, I can understand it. I didn't understand it before. I felt mm-hmm. only frustrated or anxious, even an overwhelmed from all these options because this is. Uh, like scientifically proven that if there is more than three options and you just don't know how, you know, if I choose this and there is one kind of future, but there is this other option and then that, and you just can't predict what will happen. You you just don't know about your future Mm -hmm. and you automatically, you just, you are under pressure because your brain starts to panic because yeah. you just don't have data don't have data your brain can't yeah can't process it imagine can't this process is exactly it. why no, you just can't process this we're diving and into it automatically you are overwhelmed and now i can uh, i can see how i sometimes before i wasn't aware of my body feelings I just felt this anxiety and overwhelm and it was just feeling like, oh my goodness, I just, but now I can remember that sometimes I was, my head starts mm-hmm. to ache or if it was like life-changing decision, I oh, wow. felt it in my stomach, you know, the, this gut feeling, but I wasn't aware of that. I was just stressed. You were, ex- you were ignoring it, it right? It was like, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I can't, breathe properly if i felt like i just can't choose what i really want i have to choose something what i'm expected to choose and i felt this feeling in my mm-hmm. chest like oh, i can't breathe you know so our body if you trying to like train yourself to feel like to stop in this process of making a decision and Mm -hmm. just try to feel it in your body you will understand what's going on and so Mm -hmm. you can so so let me let me ask you in a very specific way what was a time when you actually made a bad decision a decision that you know was a bad decision you know it now you didn't know it then when you made the decision but share share with us of the time oh, when the, that one, this is also like i was so excited <laughs> from this question because there's so many things i can share about it give us uh, uh, yes 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 yeah, give, give us in, the most juicy the most juicy <laughs> in your life i don't believe in something like bad decision uh-huh, uh-huh. because this is your life journey sometimes i made a decisions and it didn't then didn't go as expected but only after a few years i realized wow that was just the best thing for me to experience because now, because now i can use this experience so these long term decisions you you just don't know because you don't know why you're experiencing this and if this is good or bad uh, but there are decisions like short-term decisions, like if I will go tonight with my friends and I will drink and until late in the night. So the next day I will see that, oh, that was really bad decision to drink so much because I can see the consequences in, in, in short-term, mm-hmm. these the small decisions. So this is like, these are different kind of choices but, and, and what i would like to share uh, is that in the last few years i learned to take decision based on my heart my intuition right. and if you just make this kind of decision you feel that this is right for me right now to do so i accept also any result as uh, okay this is the right result and even if it goes like it's not like what i expected mm-hmm. but i accept that this as the right result because i felt at that time i just knew 
deep mm-hmm. within that I'm just supposed to do this. Mm-hmm. And I just, there's no uh, like doubt or second guessing or something, you know, or some guilt. Oh, this was a bad decision. How I could be so stupid to do this? No, there's nothing like this because if you just take, make a decision from from your heart, from your intuition, and I love it. Okay, this is the only right thing I have to do. Do mm-hmm. right. I love it. I love to hear this because so there any result is just good result. There's no like bad uh, decision. You, yeah, you, I do you, see. I, I also it later. I totally, why I totally see what you mean. Yeah, mm-hmm. I totally see what you mean. It's um, it's that reframing that happens eventually. Yeah. Unless you're present when the decision happens and the things are not going the way you want or plan or desire. And I have also examples. And then you're you're actually present and so you realize it. You don't need to maybe reframe it. You already are open to the results and consequences that God, creation, the universe, consciousness give you, right? Yeah, I can share uh, also like one of my experience if you are asking about the uh, decision. So uh-huh. I yeah, had a yeah, dream. Please go ahead. Yeah, I had a dream that I would just love to do something with animals. And I always loved horses. So I was thinking about this was kind of like my dream that one day I will buy a horse and I will build a um, some center for people and then can come there and I will teach them ride a horse or I will organize some uh, like journeys on horses back or just something like that you know everything with I will just build this yeah something majestic and yeah (laughs) and then in one moment in my life because we are we were building our company. I worked as an interior designer there. And in one moment I decided after we were like, I just, I said, okay, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm going to follow my dream. And I just got a job in a writing club and I studied like now I'm a licensed uh, horse riding teacher, you know, and I started to work there. And from the beginning, it's like, oh, yes, this is what I want to do. But after after three months, only three months, I realized, like, uh, no, this is not <laughs> what I want to do because this is a lot of work. And this I'm creative and now I'm supposed to do this and I'm just teaching like children how to ride a horse and I'm supposed to look at them how they are enjoying their riding and I don't have time to ride my own horse Uh this is completely not what I expected and not what I was dreaming about and where were you making that decision from I want to ask you where were you making that decision from what Maybe I was your head, your so, heart. yeah, I was so, but there are more pieces, like more points of view, because I made this decision, like, I was so angry with my husband because he didn't appreciate my work and still like, uh, so I'm like, okay, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm going to do something else. But I, I truly believe this is my dream. But now, I, as I realized, only after three months of doing this work, that, okay, now I'm free because I understood that this is actually not my dream. And mm. if you can imagine if I would try to make money because later I can just make this my dream happen and then I would buy a lot of horses and try to build everything Mm -hmm. and then I would realize no this is not my dream you know so so very often yeah look and sorry for for jumping in in this way but there's a very important piece that I believe you're sharing that very often our dreams are not ours 
very often our dreams are for some social uh, social or cultural familiar um, sort of reason our way of affirming ourselves or showing maybe we don't see we make or, yeah or maybe we don't see or because in my case it wasn't mm -hmm. like from society but it was just i didn't understood or i didn't listen to my heart because mm -hmm. i felt only that oh i love horses but i didn't follow my my heart i just i was i Talked here, like, oh, I feel that I love horses. And I start to think about, okay, how I can just uh, keep a horse and make money with that. So I this let make it my job. And I, have, and I was in my head because I believe that the only way how to how to do that, how to stay with a horse and just follow my kind of dream is this way. What I just think mm. it is. So let's, and now I understand. I'm like, oh, it's let's crazy. transform this. Oh, yeah. okay. No, I actually wasn't. I actually wasn't hearing. That's why I asked the question. I, I thought you stopped. But um, so, okay. Let's let's transform this. Let's actually see how could have you, in a way, skipped that quote unquote bad decision. There is, you, you just can't skip the experiences you need to experience. Mm. Maybe what you could skip is this anxiety and this fear of making mistake. Mm. If, you under, if you understand that, that it's not like life is not happening to you. Life is happening for you. Wow. So you will release this fear of making mistake, making bad decision. You know, wow. if you just follow your intuition, your heart, and trust that the universe has the best for you always, you, you just can't go to, you know, you will release this anxiety mm -hmm. and fear and overwhelm if you just tune into this trust. Uh -huh. So are you telling me that in a way, one, if not the best way from your perspective to make decisions and, and, and avoid this friction that we have, emotion-based friction, maybe because of fear, maybe because of lack of trust in someone or something yeah, that really is the head, best like way make, make, like, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that the best way there is to, in a way, be able to surrender to the fact that you'll make the decision and some consequences will happen and you don't truly really have control over the consequences, but you can make another decision later on. Uh, is this what you're also saying? And is this the way that actually you're, you're proposing I maybe I would uh, reformulate even this like make decision. It looks like you have to do something to you know to get some result. But if you just let this decision to come to you, you know. So you you just don't have all information. Your brain the doesn't have all information you need to make like kind of right decision because you just don't know what's right for you but there is another like your higher self or soul or universe god and you name it what's just best for you but just be more open to listen or to just let come to you the decision mm -hmm. that is right for mm -hmm. you you don't need to right. make it you know, you mm -hmm. I hear you. Let it, and let it come you. to you. Yeah. Consuming and an um, unnecessary amount of energy, and where you also can keep your well vitality levels. Yeah. Stop yeah. consuming energy into stressing about it and oh my god how do i do this um uh, like yeah. there's that friction that uh, it's that is energy leak 
that is an energy leak and you stop doing that. So this is where I really do see that pitfalls yeah. <laughs> in, yeah. in decision making. Yeah. Can yeah, what I can talk about. Oh, there is so uh, many things I would like to express uh, about I, this. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. What can, pretty sure. what can help you to just tune into this state of being, like when you can receive the decision? It's mm. you can set up your your space, your environment mm. to just help you to tune into this energy, into your inner wisdom. You can do that uh, in, in home. You can do that even in your workspace. If you need to make one decision after another in, in your mm. work, then maybe... Huh? Let, let, me, let me pose you for the sake of diving deeper into this in a, in a short version uh, interview where we will dive into the actual creating the workspace for better decision making, creating the, the, yes. the space for better decision making. And if you're yes. listening, just stay tuned because we'll be releasing that short interview. We'll be recording it and sharing it right with you. So after these kind of short, very intuitive and inflow aligned, and aligned announcement, we like to flow. We like to make decisions quick and fast that are from the heart. Let's speak of making better decisions. Let's make a little game and let's test our uh, Slavomir's abilities of making decisions, like the decision-making skills of Slavomir. How do you feel about it? Uh, it still feels like decision-making skills. I could tell stories about how I try to, like when we are talking about the better decisions, it's oh. like in more decision, more aligned with, with ourselves or more aligned with our soul's plan or something like that, because mm -hmm. it's still some, some somehow like uh, good or, and bad. It's like, mm. What is bad decision, you know? So, oh, it's not a bad. So, okay, it's this one, more this in one alignment day. with what you desire or what with your soul, and some mm -hmm. so more aligned decision, maybe because and sometimes it is just you just need some experiences. Mm -hmm. It's it looks like a really bad decision, but you learned a lot from this situation, you know, just and indeed, so and indeed. What we are doing in this case is literally to give some scenario, okay? Some some hypothetical scenario, and have you make a decision? This is this is the kind of game like jumping. Okay, and, let's and, play. And, and, let's and, play. And and, and uh, but but I hear you on the I hear you on the bad or good or bad decision. There is no good or bad, and it's uh, absolutely also about surrendering. Yeah. It's also about um, posing and seeing how the results are not fully ever in our hands. We can also take action based on the decisions and choices we make. And then what happens next? Well, we'll need necessarily to adjust to it, be yeah. resilient, be the actual species that got to 2023 eventually, because that's how we got here. Like, but making choices and decisions and then adjusting to whatever happens after uh, in the good and bad of whatever we as a species, as a humanity did, because there's so many um, quite discussable uh, choices we've made and they're pretty amazing and remarkable decisions that we made as a race. So this is why like, uh, it is important to bring some uh, fun and to train to train our abilities because sometimes we need to go about it fast yeah because we, we're in that into that situation where what do i have to do now like what can i do like i'm i'm i'm, I'm always look at this and this is a scenario that i want to throw at you right so um you're just living life you have very very kind of life-altering appointment to go to okay and 
you have to catch a train. And you are also someone who believes in flow, who believes in like uh, life is giving me what I need to get. And you're there. You're kind of on time. Okay. But they're about to close the doors and you remember you forgot something important on the table at the cafe you were sitting while waiting for the train. And so now you have this life-changing appointment on the side, something important for you. It's very important. You, you decided to go for that maybe job interview or, or, or you can name it like it, it can be the next very most important client or, or family member that you haven't seen for, for many years. And you have that one opportunity to meet that client. And so there's that opportunity that you're going to with your train but you have forgotten something very important and maybe yeah, even and irreplaceable <laughs> at yeah, the same time. These are situations. What do you choose? These are situations. So this no, is the game. This, this is the game. Are, yeah, what, yeah, do you pick? But, what do you pick and this, why would you pick that? What uh, would you pick these are situations when you just you don't have time to think. And it's mostly you just do it's level you meter, you are into that situation. I okay, if I probably I would just um, if I can see the doors closing in front of me, I just would <laughs> get into the train. And because this time you, you just don't have time to, to think. So most of this mm -hmm. is... Uh, you and how would you deal with that? You impulse, any impulse that mm -hmm. will come. And so I either would just get in the train or or I just get an impulse to just go back and pick up my thing and then it's time to like okay i choose this and now what now with this situation you know because uh -huh. you just don't have time to think about this 100 consciously this is impulsive reaction so i don't know what i would choose but then i just would have to and this would be a big challenge to accept the consequences of your that's university. where i want yeah exactly yeah. to go and so here is how do you what you can do. How do you do yeah this? yeah and this is what the first moment is always like oh my god now i just lost this option you know but then like oh, okay i can change it so breathe mm. breathe mm. okay Mm -hmm. And this phase of, of acceptance of this, it, it's maybe almost like grieving with these phases, you know, first is like, I can't believe that, that I just, it's no, it's not happening to me. And then yeah. it's like uh, this acceptance, like, okay, okay, it's happened and now. And, and this scenario is like, oh, now my mm -hmm. life is... Mm -hmm. I destroyed this or something. Oh, how stupid I am. I should have just made another decision mm -hmm. or something. Uh -huh. But you see, there's guilt, everyone, shame. You know, but it's, it's, right? it's not uh, like everyone is going through this, but it's important if you are trained to, like, in situation like this, you can just not skip completely, but it's just a matter of seconds like oh i missed it uh, okay and what i can do with and and you almost immediately come to the phase when you are trying to find some solution or just surrender or something but if you are not used to that or if you are just you don't have a tool how to get in your high energy again you stay in this stress mm -hmm. and pressure mm -hmm. and feeling of loss and these scenarios and you feel guilty and you are just blaming yourself oh i should have done this and how i would and, and mm -hmm, all these mm -hmm. consequences and these catastrophic scenarios so let's do something, let's do something yeah, okay i love it i love it i really love where it's going this is why i jump in um let's do one thing let's pick both one after the other okay, and okay. see what are the emotions that you'd feel and how you deal okay. with it okay uh -huh. So this is very instrumental for you who listen because, well, this could happen to anyone. 
Yeah. We're talking yeah. about emotions. What causes an emotion and how you deal with that emotion in yeah. the moment when it happens. And well, you need to be prepared in a way to this kind of situations because well, you forgot something very important. Maybe you're phone with all your work yeah yeah this is this was what i was thinking about cafe. because this is really like oh if you lost your phone i mean that, let's say that, that i know i know go away right yeah and, and i leave the whole setting here and and then i need to go and then like oh leaving this or leaving what my son because it's an emergency like these kind of situations so let's pick the the the, the situation where you actually catch the train you forgot your yeah your your laptop your 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 work pretty much on the table at the cafe what do you do how yeah. do you deal with that feeling of oh as i i forgot that like what are the emotions that you feel how do you deal how do you deal with that yeah okay but i have to admit that i'm really good in uh, that's like good. That's good. Losing things because I did it so many times. So I'm trained in this. <laughs> okay, like, okay, this is, a, oh it's my awesome. God. And I just lost my laptop with all my work and everything. So, like, mm -hmm. okay, okay, I can mm -hmm. change it. What? Who can I contact right now? How can I just do these things? Like, think about real. So you find options. Situation. That's what you do. Yeah, That's what you I would do. You find, find options. options. Who I'm going to contact? Who can just deal with that? From like you know, ask what are the consequences? What I should do if I can't do that right now? Who I can ask to do that for me? Yeah. Because you know mm -hmm. this is yeah. what yeah. just you need to deal with so and and in the next moment and after i would just deal with like kind of technical things you need to do some steps to right. just prevent this to be even bigger problem of the problem you of know? course so you need to yeah, get so into the you, rational you, you need yes you need to do the steps mm -hmm. But then I would focus, okay, at least I caught the train, so I'm going to this interview. So now what I can do, I can just focus on that interview because uh, there's nothing I can do with this lost laptop. You I would refrain. After I, yes, after I did these steps, and is there something else I can do? No, I'm here in the train. I, there's nothing I can do, so there's no point in mm -hmm. thinking about it right now because uh, you know, it's it's so, over. Okay. Okay. So one, one step that so. I hear is acceptance and presence. So there's one yeah. step that is acceptance and presence. This one step is stepping into the rational and kind of like problem solving almost. Like yeah, yeah. Seeking, what seeking I for can options. do because there are things I can do and, and it doesn't make a sense to can repeat. I oh, I should, how I could do this. Oh, mm -hmm. I should mm -hmm. make a, a different decision or something. Mm -hmm. no no point to do this so like Indeed. okay Indeed. okay just focus on what i can do instead of yeah. what i just can't change anymore you know so mm -hmm. what i can do okay here yeah. are the steps okay tick the box okay i did all steps i i could and mm -hmm. now just move on and focus on something what i can Chat. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to do these interviews. Okay, let's focus on you now preparing for for the next next thing that I, I can change. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there's the problem solving. There's sifting for options, and there's the presence and acceptance of the truth of the situation you find yourself yeah. in. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, pieces that we can all implement. Now, let's pick the other real quick before going into some more kind of even funny questions. But let's pick the other option. So you didn't catch the train. So you have more of an emotional sort of situation going on maybe. And you, you have your laptop. You have your work. That's awesome. You lost the opportunity. What is the emotion yeah. that you feel you'd feel? Oh, this is it worked so uh, hard. This is more difficult for me, I have to admit, because wow. this is more connected with my previous, like, I'm not good enough. 
I wasn't able to do this and now I lost this opportunity yeah. and how this is more difficult for me to accept. So yeah. that's because I, that's I it. thought that See? maybe my See? first impulse would uh -huh. be to just catch the train to the train and just <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. It's all based on us. It's all individual, right? Uh, yeah, but never um, I would but in some way it's also easier to deal with that because it doesn't require any practical steps i just miss the train i miss the opportunity and it's easy for me to accept okay if this just happened probably it wouldn't mean for me mm. and just what would you do? Okay. okay okay this was obviously not the right opportunity for me because if it would i wouldn't miss the train you okay know? before going there before going there because there's a reframe that happened already and this is a hypothetical scenario um for the sake of our listeners really like who might find themselves in a situation like this before being able to reframe you're going through some emotional breakdown or like oh oh this is terrible like my, the, the the opportunity of my life just gone how do you deal with that emotion yeah it, it depends how are you used to observe your emotions and how good you know your just weak points and my weak point was for a long long years this feeling guilty and feeling right. not good enough and this situation it's like i'm not good enough because i'm so stupid to forget my laptop and now i miss the train and i'm not good enough and and then this like feeling guilty like oh my goodness mm -hmm. i just do it again and all the you know I, so mm -hmm. so but this is because I know myself and I can understand emotions, I can understand What's connections, that? you know, no, and I know my triggers mm. and I know Sorry. how to deal with it. And I Very just need good. to, you know, to stop if, if I'm observing my emotions and I find a thought that, you know, was triggering mm. these emotions. Sweet. Like, an, oh, no, just, okay, it's just, and, and it's mm. much easier now for me to, to believe that, okay, if this is what just happened, so this is probably the best for me, because me... everything is happening for me, not to oh. me, you know, so it's oh. like, okay, okay, thank you, universe. <laughs> let me let me hit you with, with with one piece here and it is about energy and vitality uh let's suppose and this is kind of almost like a a, a, a lightning answer right um let's suppose that you do find yourself in a very low energy state you're very tired you didn't sleep actually because you were prepared yeah. for that interview oh, the whole mm -hmm. night you were you're you're like exhausted okay and maybe you didn't have breakfast even, so you're hungry. <laughs> it's like the oh, worst, the worst situation. That's the worst, yeah, that's mm -hmm. the worst. <laughs> Especially if you're a breakfast lover. Yeah. So you're into that situation. You don't have much energy. So in that moment, would you feel that you have the the the, the possibility to stay present and reframe? How would you immediately raise your energy? Yeah, it is that it's we don't need to rely only on our body energy because there is a source, you know, mm -hmm. if you okay. really need okay. that, you can connect with mm -hmm. a source. You mm -hmm. can't, oh, I was just going to tell that you can't uh, live this way for long, but there are, in fact, that are people who are just living just through using prana yeah prana, <laughs> prana, like, prana. They don't, yeah they don't need to eat even so right. this is breatharianism so, and this uh -huh, uh -huh. yeah yeah so this is like possible because there are like proofs but uh -huh. if i'm not yet there or i'm not just i don't have access to this all the time but in important situation 
you just can't rely on a source. Mm -hmm. And and if you just because the source wouldn't deny to give you energy you really need if it's important for you. And if it's not important for me, it was only that I thought that this is my opportunity, but it wasn't important for my soul journey or something. So I wouldn't get energy and that's okay too. You know, because it, it, but yeah, so this surrender and this, but we are not only our body, we can get access to the source, mm -hmm. unlimited source of energy. Mm. Okay, this is this is beautiful. So, um, look, before getting into uh, three, four tips of how you'd tap into more energy to make better decisions, so that we wrap it up with very, very um, practical pieces. Let me ask you two, three, four, uh, a bit more funny question. Okay, um, let's play this let play this let, let me let me even select a few questions i have a list of very nice questions are you ready to have this lightning round these rapid fire questions round okay let's go yeah for it. okay 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 so if you had to choose between being able to talk to animals or being able to speak every language fluently which would you choose? Oh, animals, animals, animals definitely. Sorry. Because you can me. you can learn any language you want using just your brain. But oh, but you, you have to choose. You have to choose here, huh? You have to. Oh no, them. animals! Uh -uh. I animals. always would choose animals because nature is this so fascinating. This was an easy one. Yeah. This was an easy one. It was just a warm up. I yeah. I was expecting this answer from you. <laughs> would you rather fight one horse-sized duck? So a big, big duck, or a hundred duck-sized horses. <laughs> you need to pick one. Oh. I don't know. This is completely rather, rather... out of my realities. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But this is this okay. Is it, right? Let's go with one duck because maybe it can fly, and so I can instead of riding, I could fly, and it, oh, this could be oh yeah. Okay, All right. So okay, this, this okay. Yeah. So a big, big uh, horse-sized duck. Yeah. Let's go for that. All right. Yeah. Okay. What would you choose from home? What would you go for? So, um, if you were stranded on a desert island and could only have three items, what would those items be? But Pick your items. Pick, okay, you're if, standing if I, on a line. No, I just have a question because if I'm supposed to choose something like knife and something for survival, or I can survive and I can pick like items for me because I would pick a guitar. <laughs> you're stranded. Uh, you're stranded on a desert island. You're you're like lost on the desert island. Ah, I'm lost. And on well, I mean, uh, you have three items. You can pick. You can pick any item. Three items. Okay, so something it would be something practical, but it just takes fun from this question. If I have to think about practical items, like you, you know, you need a knife and something like for survival. But I mean, I would still yeah, pick a maybe. guitar to be very honest. <laughs> yeah, guitar, guitar, yeah, like, yeah, guitar, definitely. guitar, definitely. Yeah, okay, but the knife <laughs> and maybe I don't know. Something so I could be free. Ah, you can with a knife. You can find anything else in the nature and just create. Maybe X even and a, and a gu guitar. Yeah, you'd go for a guitar. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. go for a guitar. Some music, some music. You don't get. If bored. I'm alone, no, oh, you need just guitar. That's awesome. Okay, okay. Um, so let's let's actually sh switch gears again and end this together yeah so this was fun as a game to know that you'd uh, rather fight a big horse-sized duck and that uh, you'd have a guitar although stranded on an island uh see how you survive on that um but let's get back to some very um 
important tools for decision making. Okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. So this would be your own tools, your own tools on how to raise your energy so that you make the right decisions. I would almost say, um, what is your system and approach that you've got when, when, when you do have to make both simple yeah. and complex decisions? Yeah. Try to give us okay. two, three pieces that our listeners can use yeah. starting the, today. The easiest way if you need to make a decision is just you can think about it and do a research or anything, but if you need to do some, like, like this, this final decision, you can just put your hand on your heart and just stay still for a second or any time you have a minute and, and just tune into the, this heart energy, what to feel it in your heart, not just in, in your brain. So, and, and this is not the, the only thing you can do. Of course, do all your other things, research or anything, but mm. the, the final decision mm. should be this, like mm. put your hand on your heart, because this is also like you are physically connected with your heart and just stay still and switch off your thoughts and mm. feel. Mm -hmm. Feel it in your heart. This is the, the easiest way. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and in the same the time, like okay. complicated way, because it's not so easy if you're not trained into this, ah, like switch off this. Right. Thoughts. So, how can we make it easier for the ones who are more, who are a bit more rational? Because maybe once you wouldn't have believed, right? You were so rational, you wouldn't have yeah. believed, like, yeah, turning yeah. into my heart to make decisions, like, what a. But yes, I yeah. can't do that you and I won't do it. Like, okay, so. you can't do that from but, one day to other, you know, you can't change in one day. And, and now we are in this, uh, like, Let's hack that. process Let's of hack that. changing. Yeah, uh -huh. but it's okay. It's a long, it's, it will be a webinar in the future, but you need to be aware that you need to build a practice of just tapping into heart energy. Mm, it, it's a practice. It could take time. It needs a practice. If you are rational, just Google that. Google some tools that will resonate with you. And don't think, train yourself to, to feel what resonates with you. You know, not just think about, okay, this is too, too expensive for me. Ah, oh, this sounds weird or something. Just train mm -hmm. yourself to, mm -hmm. to feel what resonates or what, you our like, what you're excited sure. about it and we can we can uh, observe emotions you know if you're excited about something mm -hmm. uh, or or you can train yourself if you need to uh, make a decision either or so you can put your hand on heart and now imagine fully like visualize okay now i'm going to take this decision imagine how it you expect it will go mm -hmm. and and then imagine okay and now i'm going to make this decision this second decision like no from this both and mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. feel the difference or you can this is this is fun way how to do that all right you, and just uh, throw a coin, you know, and decide, okay, if this side or the oh, end, oh, oh, oh. and but it's not about what it really will you will find, it's about you will feel that what you want, it's mm. it would be, you know, in that moment, the That's coin is here, now it's here, and you know what you want. You you then you know what you want what you hope you will find there uh, no, and so, your your, yeah. your actually suggestion is to go for the one that you like like you you hope there's one or the other you should actually go for that one yeah yeah oh uh, that's pretty genius that's pretty counterintuitive i actually really really like i think i'll use this <laughs> Yeah, and when we are talking about uh, this practice of uh -huh. just tuning into the heart energy, there is my expertise is you can intentionally create a space mm -hmm. 
where you can go every day and sit there in peace. There are rules or just I have many suggestions how you can build this space. Um, um, talking about it, it's like a sacred soul sanctuary, the mm. place where you can mm. connect with your soul on a regular basis yeah. and just train yourself. So this, it, we can talk about it the next time. Absolutely. But, Ooh, yes, but yes, there yes. is a way how you can support yourself in build this practice and just mm -hmm. improve your ability to tap into the heart energy and you can improve your just ability to make a decision that is in alignment with what mm -hmm. is here for you. This is so powerful. I do believe that if, if I mean, and when uh, actually use, when practice, these tools absolutely can uh, transform your uh, your way you make decisions, your your ability to tap into well yourself to make decisions that are in alignment, and your ability to stay present, to remain present, to not fall off track, and 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 just listen to indeed the ego driven or or the social cultural influence decisions. You can truly make decisions that are aligned to you. And Slavomira, I believe you you opened up the world for many um it's not always uh so obvious that in order to make decisions we need to have high energy levels and well i can't wait to have the next conversation together with you to see how to raise those, those energy levels and and how to make sure that those energy levels stay high well, creating the right environment specifically yeah. for decision making and <laughs> trips and tri tricks and 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 uh and hints this is what i was trying i couldn't find a word in this very moment tricks and hints so that your decision yeah. making i would name it tools because when we are talking tools, about yeah. tricks it it looks like oh it's something you know but but there are no, uh, no tools. shortcuts I, I love it. these are just tools yeah, I mean it, it's it, it is a relative shortcut. If you observe the fact that you're not used to use it, yeah, you don't I normally mean, like, use it. Is, Therefore, that's yeah, the normal like, path. A trick is so something. You, it's not um, like you can cheat on something or or something like this kind of energy, you know. So tricks, it's something so that is not that. real, you know, because. <laughs> Even words are important. There let me is play with this. Let me play. Let, let me play with this. Then. Yeah. So be aware. This will be words. the next level way of making decision for our yeah. listeners. Yeah. And this is how I would land on it, because yes, it's true. It's not a trick. It's not a. It's not even a a hack. Well, it is a new way that you can use. New way. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. New better way. A new yeah. way. Next more, level, a, a, more alignment with your uh -huh. next level you yeah indeed yeah. it is and so after a deep breath that i take i am very um, proud for having had such an amazing guest as you slavo mira thank you for listening from home uh and learning about decision making and energy levels with us and, and and how to be more in harmony with you making decisions because this was really about it the fact that you cannot make a good or bad decision you can only tap into your truest essence and then go about the consequences that come so thank you again Slavomira. would you have one last word or even sentence that you choose for our listeners <laughs> yeah, thank you for having me and uh, what I would like to tell like at the end of this conversation is that be aware of that your environment matters because it's easier way to if you want to change something your habits or something and if you have something tangible visible something like material yeah. you can see you can rely on it's so much easier for you to change everything. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. It can help and it's just 
easy way how you can support yourself and it's so underestimated so don't mm. underestimate your environment i have so many tips how you can just use your environment for it can support you energetically in to, in growing into your just the highest potential mm. and we are totally looking forward to that so my dear listeners stay unlimited and we speak to you in the next episode for this next level embodiment podcast thank you deeply bye